Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by for yet another video. I do appreciate that and as always I appreciate you. So what I have here it says six years after Fukushima robots finally find reactors melted uranium fuel. Now it says the Japanese government and companies use radiation hardened machines to search for the fuel that escaped the plant's ruined reactors. He goes on to say the four engineers hunched before a bank of monitors, one holding what looked like a game controller. They had spent a month training for what they were about to do. It says a pilot, a small robot into the contaminated heart of the ruined Fukushima nuclear plant. It says the earlier robots had failed, getting caught on debris or suffering circuit malfunctions from excess radiation. But the newer version, called the Mini um, Manbo or Little Sunfish, was made of radiation hardening materials with a sensor to help it avoid dangerous hot spots in the plant's flooded reactor buildings. Now it also goes on to say that um, the size of a shoebox, the Manbo used tiny propellers to hover and glide through water in a manner similar to an aerial drone. It says after three days of carefully navigating through a shattered reactor building, the Manbo finally reached the heavily damaged Unit 3 reactor. It says that there the robot beam back video of a gaping hole at the bottom of the reactor and on the floor um, beneath it clumps of what looked like solidified lava the first images ever taken by the plants melted uranium fuel now here's a picture of the actual machine or robot the mini mambo mambo that was used um, in, in getting to the unit 3 uh, reactor. Now it says the discovery in July at the Unit 3, similar success this year in locating the fuel of the plant's other two marine reactors, marked what Japanese officials hope will prove to be a turning point in the worst atomic disaster since Chernobyl. Now it says that the fate of the fuel had been one of the most enduring mysteries of the catastrophe, now it says, which occurred on March 11, 2011, when an earthquake and a 50 foot tsunami knocked out vital cooling systems here at the plant. Um, it says leftover heat, three of the six reactors melted down, their uh, uranium fuel rods liquefied with uh, light candle wax dripping to the bottom of the reactor vessels in a molten mass hot enough to burn through the steel walls and even penetrate the concrete floors. Now it says robot finds potential fuel debris in the reactor three at the Fukushima number one power plant. So let's go ahead and watch this video of that right now. Now it's a two minute and 24 second video. So we may not watch it all, but you can see here as they are entering the reactor here with the mini Mambo. So we'll t go ahead and take a look at this real quick and see what we actually can, can see. Now as we're watching this, it goes on to say that no one knew for sure exactly how far those melted fuel cores had traveled before desperate plant workers later celebrated as the Fukushima 50 were able to cool them again by pumping water into the reactor building. Now it says, with radiation levels so high, the fate of the fuel remained unknown. Um, so as you can see in this video here, they, they finally found in reactor 3 uh, the, the spent fuel rods. Um, as we keep watching this video here. But as you can see in this video here, you know, we'll, we'll kind of skip ahead a little bit real quick because it is a two minute video. Let's see what we can finish up seeing. Now you can see holes throughout the reactor. They said they found a massive hole in a wall as well. It's a, it's a cool video though of inside the reactor so um, so they fortunately have, have found what they were looking for finally but that's it for that video but it goes on to say that as officials become more confident about managing the disaster they began a search for the missing fuel Scientists and engineers build a radiation resistant robots like the Mambo and a device like a huge x-ray machine that uses the exotic space particles called um, muons to see the reactor's innards. Now it says now that the engineers uh, say they have found the fuel, officials of the government and the utility that runs the plant hope to sway 
public opinion and six and a half years after the accident spewed radiation over northern Japan and at one point seemed to in, be endangering Tokyo, the officials hope to persuade a skeptical world that the plant has moved out of the post-disaster crisis mode and into something much less threatening, cleanup. Now it says, until now, we didn't know exactly where the fuel was or what it looked like. Um, the, the general manager of the nuclear power division of the plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power, or TEPCO, said. Now he also said that now that we have seen it, we can make plans to retrieve it. It says that TEPCO was keen to portray the plant as one of the big industrial cleanup site. About 7,000 people work here, building new water storage tanks, moving radioactive debris to new disposal site and erecting enormous scaffoldings over reactor buildings torn apart by the huge hydrogen explosions that occurred during the accident. It says access to the plant is easier than it was just a year ago when visitors still had to change into special protective clothing. These days workers and visitors, visitors can move about, all, move about all but the most dangerous areas in street clothes. So, I mean, it sounds like six years later they're they're finally making um, you know more and more progress but there's also a lot of people out there that are gonna tell you that this this is just a, a cover-up in a lot of ways that this is much much worse than what they're they're leading us to believe and um, you know um, you know I, I'm not gonna lean either way I just like to share these articles and what not and get your guys' opinion. Do you believe that they're finally getting to the point where it's safe? Um, or is it just uh, still a cover up? I don't know. Uh, you know, I just wanted to share this article with you. But, you know, if it is getting close to being cleaned up, I mean, at least there's a little bit of good news. But, um, again, though, you, you, you kind of look back to, at Chernobyl and, and how it's still not technically safe to live in a lot of areas around Chernobyl. And that's been, what, 30 years? So, to me, it's hard to believe that a, a meltdown of this size, a, a re nuclear reaction, reactor failure of this magnitude, could be almost cleaned up after six years. I find that hard to believe, but I'm not an expert. I'm just sharing these stories I find interesting with you. So let me know down below uh, how you feel about this whole situation and if you believe that they're telling the truth about it being close to being cleaned up. So anyways, thanks for supporting the channel and watching these videos. You know, we're growing every day and that's because of you and I appreciate every single one of you. But other than that, be sure to share, like, subscribe, and comment down below. I hope you have a great day. Peace.